Meteor Lactial had 200 people working. We had 45 lorries in the road. Can you remember the day you decided to throw the towel in? I try very hard not to remember. You see that them, them last few months, you know, the house goes back on the lane, everything goes back on the lane. You're using your credit cards to try to get money for the, the wages. So far, so familiar. A once thriving business going under in the recession. But this is a story with the difference. Because what happened next between this man and his bank has been captured on secret video recordings. I'm sure there are hundreds and hundreds of customers making allegations. But I'm not making allegations. There's video evidence of their people doing what they employed them to do. We've looked at hours of footage, which we're broadcasting tonight for the very first time. It was really quite extraordinary, wasn't it? It's bank officials uh, recorded on tape doing something that clearly they shouldn't have been doing. It's lethal. It's dynamite. We haven't seen anything like it before. That bit of video footage is the only thing that separates me from hundreds of others, because, like, nobody would believe if I was trying to tell that story. How are you? Hey, thanks. Not so bad. You're taking a Honda. John Conway's electrical supplies company used to sponsor the Derry City football team. Where's my youngest? She's still in How are you? Well, you're uh, the what? The hell's eating? These days, he and his sons attend matches through the turnstiles like everyone else. No, 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 Meteor's saying stuff on you. At its height, John Conway's company, Meteor Controls, had an annual turnover of £24 million. He admits his company's financial difficulties began when Sterling collapsed seven years ago. And that, coupled with a major recession in the construction industry, threw his business into crisis. Most of our purchases in US dollar. Most of our sales was in Euro. Sterling was on a nosedive, and that cost us an awful lot of money. The odds were against him, but Conway thinks his business might have survived these catastrophic events if it hadn't been for the added pressure from one bank he did business with, the Bank of Ireland. This wasn't responsible. This was, you know, the industry was tightening. We had to keep cutting back so we remained profitable. But it was this other stuff that was going on in the background, the bank stuff, which was the stuff that really we couldn't manage. Over 200 years ago, Bank of Ireland was founded on the principle of supporting and guiding our customers. We recognise that for the last few years, however, the waters have been particularly stormy. The bank may advertise their supporting role, but John Conway says this wasn't his experience when things got rough at Meteor. You could never get money released. Money would be sitting in the account. Uh, there was a continuous thing of saying, yeah, yes, we'll, we'll transfer 50,000 tomorrow. The money wouldn't be transferred. Uh, you couldn't get anybody on the phone, wouldn't answer the phone. And then you'd get an apology the next day. John Conway has shown us some of the emails exchanged between Meteor and Bank of Ireland during the period before the company went to the wall. They give a flavour of his frustration at cash flow problems caused by the bank. A claim Bank of Ireland rejects. Four payment requests last week not actioned. I've been let down yet again by a transfer not going... Due to a very regrettable run of human error. Again, I had to contact the bank. I can only give my unreserved apologies. A deliberate refusal to transfer the funds and work with us. So here we have a bank broke itself at this stage that for whatever reason was frequently missing deadlines and holding on to what to meet here were large amounts of cash, making it even more difficult for a company that was struggling to survive. Tonight on Spotlight, we bring you the secret recordings we had to fight in court to broadcast. And we reveal an extraordinary battle between businessman John Conway and his former bankers. He secretly recorded tapes that he says expose how elements within the commercial finance department of Bank of Ireland were willing to go to any lengths to claw back money for the bank, including one employee attempting fraud. The bank, in turn, 
accused John Conway's firm of fraud. So what do the tapes really reveal? And what do they show us about how some Bank of Ireland officials operated behind closed doors? John Conway believes that if he hadn't secretly recorded Bank of Ireland employees after Meteor's collapse, the subsequent criminal behaviour he says he uncovered would never have come to light. The Cookstown firm Meteor Electrical has ceased trading with a loss of 70 jobs. The company has gone into administration. Meteor is Ireland's largest independent electrical wholesaler. The downturn in the construction industry and currency exchange rate problems have been blamed. Managing Director John Conway says he's been working uh, to try and find a way of overcoming the company's financial difficulties, but he said a viable alternative. So what impact will these job losses have on the town, the DUP MLA? When it closed in June 2009, Meteor was owed nearly £3 million from customers. Once the liquidator was in place, the Bank of Ireland, with whom Meteor did most of its cash business, sent in their own staff to try and recoup the millions of pounds owed to Meteor and in turn to the bank. This is Tony McCrory, an ex-sales manager at Meteor, who knew the books inside out. He was brought back in to help the two women from the bank navigate their way around the accounts. From early on, he had misgivings. When did you start to think, hold on a minute, there's something not quite right? Um, well, pretty much straight away, I mean, after the first couple of days, um, there would be a few, a, a few flipping remarks here there, a few things that you would think, hmm, strange. Further down the line, when it started to get... Well, probably dangerous, I thought to myself, of course, what, what have I got myself involved with here? Given his experience of the bank, John Conway says he was already suspicious about what the bank's employees would do. He says Tony McCrory then came to him and appeared to confirm his fears. At this point, John Conway decided to record the Bank of Ireland staff as they worked on his premises. I never recorded anybody in my life, but I says, I need to know what's going on here. Spotlight has examined many hours of footage recorded by John Conway, which give a fascinating insight into the practices of the two employees from the Commercial Finance Department of Bank of Ireland. Tony, this is the actual footage uh, of the conversations in this very office. Uh, between you and the two women involved. Because obviously there's no one here now, Correct. but this, it was here that it took place. Here, in footage broadcast for the first time, bank official Sarah Breen boasts to her colleague Kelly Toner and to Tony McCrory about just how ruthless they were prepared to be in collecting money. Of one of the ones that I had was a poor fella who was in Holland, whose mother was dying of cancer. <laughs> And I was emailing them and talking to him, now you see him and you think she was a lovely girl. And he was taking his mother for chemotherapy treatment. Yeah. And I just gave him a reply, but I said, well, obviously his mother's dying. Bring him, bring him down. I said, he's just dying. His money hadn't been, has he said that money? I don't care. Ring them. Find out where my money is. <laughs> they claim they will stop at nothing to recover money for the bank, and they're clearly proud of how they are seen as an unstoppable duo by others in their department. Yeah, it's, 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 we have a reputation as well. You have to think. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you being sales. <laughs> you, you build your sales up, and that's where you get your. We we'll ne we'll never get to see this. Exactly. We will do anything. Yet at times they appear to have the leeway to help certain creditors. The woman with the school uniform and she says, Look, I am in a payment plan with me here. She says, but can you please give me a break for August and September? It's just I need to buy the goods from the kids' uniforms. Um, so I just, you know, things like that break your heart. But it's clear from the footage that there are certain debts they won't let go of, particularly when they're dealing with creditors they perceive to be disrespectful to them. 
And then if it's tense in their attitude for you, you know, like your man, like that was who, but that team was really rude to you in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, the first time you spoke to him, sure he wouldn't even let you speak. Mm-hmm. And he is just, well, like, he's dead, mate. Uh, whatever it takes to get him, I'll get, I, we'll yeah, have him, him, but he'll not, he'll not get away. <laughs> Clearly, it was in everyone's interest, including Meteor's, for the bank to collect as much money as possible in this situation. But what is surprising are the tactics the woman appear to be willing to use in order to do so. John Conway says Kelly Toner's role quickly went from debt collection to attempted fraud. When she couldn't get the money from customers who owed it, she tried to collect it from Meteor's bad debt insurance. A lot of companies have a form of insurance called bad debt insurance, whereby if one of their customers can't pay, they can claim the money from an insurance policy. On tape, Kelly Toner divulges how she regularly made up false information on insurance claims. She admits to withholding information from insurers and to telling lies. One of the things Kelly Toner claims to have duped the insurers about is that there had been court judgments against customers in relation to money owed. If there were such judgments in place, the insurer would pay out much more readily. Kelly Toner goes on to boast of misleading insurers about important documents known as proof of delivery or PODs. When insurers raised the fact that there were no PODs, she assured them she had seen them when she hadn't. No PODs? Oh, we just couldn't get the POD, but I've used the POD to assess you there. Sure, if you don't try, you don't get. Is that quite a call? Is that very important, like, or is that... Yes. Yeah. Get it off? These tapes are clearly of serious concern. Kelly Toner, who has since left Bank of Ireland, took a legal injunction against both Spotlight and John Conway to try to prevent the broadcast of the material. But what is most concerning is another incident from the footage because it appears to show insurance fraud being carried out by a bank employee. We see Kelly Toner actually asking for Meteor's records to be tampered with in order to make a company that didn't owe money look like it did. Kelly Toner wants to put through an insurance claim for over €12,000 for a customer called Independent Electrical Wholesalers based in Dublin, who she says owe this amount to Meteor. The two companies had what's known as a contra deal in place, which means they exchanged goods and services without cash ever changing hands. However, as her colleague Sarah Breen had pointed out to her moments earlier, while Independent Electrical had owed Meteor €12,964 in the past, the Dublin company is in turn owed €18,000 by Meteor and is therefore approximately €6,000 in credit. Oh, our oh, balance was down to £12,000. No, our balance was down to £12,000. You paid the Independent Electricals had provided 18,000 euro worth of services to Meteor, which as Sarah Breen makes absolutely clear to Kelly Toner, 
wiped out their 12,000 euro debt and brought independent electrical 6,000 euro into credit. Undeterred by Sarah Breen's warning, Kelly Toner then proceeds to ask for part of Meteor's payment transaction history to be deleted in order to try and claim the cash from an insurance company. Kelly Toner is willing to tamper with the accounts to fraudulently claim money for the bank. She goes on to ask Tony McCrory to remove recent transactions from the account history between Meteor and Independent Electrical. Do you want them? Do you want to take deals down through there? Look, oh, because that's like a contract and then a reverse contract. It's just not drawing attention yeah. to mm -hmm. it. Yeah, take that off. I'm not going to send that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to send that. Yeah, I'm not going to send that. I'm not going to send that. Would they be attacked at the late? Can you understand why some people might say, well, this man, Tony McCrory, is captured on camera helping Kelly Toner to edit uh, Meteor's credit history? Is that is he not equally guilty of conspiring to mislead an insurer? <laughs> what what was I getting out of it? I wasn't getting anything, anything out of it. I was getting I was getting paid for for a day's work to do there at the time. I knew it was on the camera. I don't nothing. I don't think. Look, I leave it up to the judgment of people people at home. I don't think that anybody's going to look at this and think that I done something wrong. I was made redundant at the time, in no small way a contributing factor to the bank. So I have absolutely no sympathy for them, and my conscience is clear. We showed the clip of Kelly Toner and Tony McCrory to Julian Radcliffe, a specialist in fraud against insurance companies, who's acted as an expert witness in several international fraud cases. This case was a classic where there was money owed both ways. And what these people appeared to be doing was trying to cut off the record at a certain point when there was money which didn't suit them being owed in the direction that didn't suit them. But it is very serious because in an insolvency situation, it's very important that the integrity of the accounting record should be maintained. Do you think it's attempted fraud? In the insurance world, it would be considered fraudulent on the evidence that I've seen. Then we showed the footage to Neil Swift, a criminal lawyer who specialises in white-collar crime. We asked him if he felt he would be able to prosecute on the basis of the evidence we showed him. Yes, I certainly would. And on what grounds would you take the case? There's definitely evidence that, uh, that uh, an offence of fraud has been committed. There's evidence of dishonesty from the mouths of the people concerned. Uh, there's direct evidence of doctoring a document. Um, and there's direct evidence of knowledge of what the true situation is. So there appear to be sufficient um, evidence there to prosecute a fraud. We asked Kelly Toner and the bank to give us their response to the tapes. We asked them if they thought this kind of behaviour was acceptable and whether it reflected the ethos of the bank. We asked them if any investigations or disciplinary procedures had been carried out within the bank on foot of their having seen the video. In response, Bank of Ireland questioned the veracity, reliability and truthfulness of the footage and said in any case it would not be appropriate to comment on it as it is currently the subject of legal proceedings between Bank of Ireland and John Conway. Kelly Toner tried to injunct this programme and failed. Her lawyer subsequently told Spotlight that she categorically denies any fraud whatsoever was perpetrated and says she did not personally submit any claims to Meteor's insurers. She accepted that she made comments that were ill-judged, insensitive and inappropriate, but says she was goaded into making them by Tony McCrory. She unreservedly apologises for any offence caused by her comments. We also wrote to Sarah Breen, who did not reply.
John Conway says he asked a business associate to make senior figures in the bank aware of the tapes soon after they were recorded. The bank says John Conway has sought to make use of the tapes. The existence of an outstanding personal guarantee owed to the bank by John Conway is a source of a bitter dispute between them. Viewed in this light, the tapes could appear to offer a potential form of blackmail. Listen, that's the nonsense. Blackmail in the bank. When I first recorded the bank, we contacted the Board of Bank of Ireland and told them that the, we had caught them uh, fiddling. Why didn't you go to the police at the outset? Very simple. And I've been asked this 50 times, why you go to the police? Look, Kelly and Sarah were two people who were doing a job that they were employed to do. And the most that was going to happen is that something was going to happen to those two. But going to the police on these two, the, the people above them, you know, this goes, the fish rots from the head. But what did the bank do when they became aware of the existence of the tapes? According to Kelly Toner, managers brought her in and told her she was being filmed. She says she was then instructed to return to the meteor job. We don't know much more about how the bank reacted internally to the footage. We do know that they pursued a fraud investigation, not against Kelly Toner, but against John Conway's firm, Meteor. The bank wouldn't tell us the detail of their allegations against John Conway's company, but they claim that in Meteor's last days, the company engaged in what's known as invoice discounting fraud, issuing thousands of pounds in false invoices, knowing the bank would cover them by paying money into Meteor's account. Bank of Ireland told us they successfully claimed fraud insurance in the aftermath of Meteor's collapse, and they said that means insurers were satisfied that fraud had taken place. Less than 24 hours ago, Spotlight was leaked a draft of an internal Bank of Ireland report on the fraud allegations. It confirms that the bank claimed €900,000 from their insurers. But even after that payment, the bank says it still suffered a loss of almost half a million pounds. The Bank of Ireland had refused to give us access to the evidence on which they based their allegations. But the fraud report says the bank found more than 100 instances where there were issues with missing purchase orders, credit notes, goods returned and goods not received. Spotlight had already investigated some of the claims. In a number of cases, we find what appear to be reasonable explanations. In other cases, we've not been able to fully investigate information that would appear to support the bank, partly because the bank and some other key participants have not cooperated with us. But the fraud report also contains the conclusions of Meteor's liquidator, Kavanagh Kelly, who investigated the allegation for the bank. It said they had not been able to conclude that there had been any fraudulent activity. But if there was no fraud, how can it be that the bank claimed €900,000 in fraud insurance? Whether or not that was before or after, Meteor's liquidator had said they could not conclude there was any fraudulent activity. We don't know and the bank won't tell us. In fact, we can reveal the bank did not even tell Meteor's liquidator about the insurance claim. Have you ever committed fraud? Let's be serious about this here. There was never a fraud. This was well covered, well documented. The liquidator covered it, said there was nothing. Right? The, the director's disqualification people gave me a clean bill of health. There never was an issue. In June 2014, more than four years after they say they discovered the alleged meteor fraud, Bank of Ireland reported John Conway to the PSNI. He and his lawyers have questioned the timing of the complaint which they say came a few weeks after John Conway indicated he was attempting to take the bank to court. Bank of Ireland told us they couldn't answer any questions about their allegations against John Conway because they did not want to compromise the PSNI investigation in any way. 
they, they produced this report to the PSNI. And I have never heard tell of it. And that's 18 months ago. So you're saying that the bank made a complaint to the PSNI in 2014. You're saying that in the 18 months since then, you have never been approached by the well, PSNI. I, I actually know very little about it. But you know what? If there was something wrong, why would the bank sit on this for four and a half years before they would go to the PSNI? You know, this is quite obvious there was nothing wrong. This is a nonsense and it's the bank throwing whatever dirt they can to try to get the, get the attention away from themselves. So what did Bank of Ireland do in response to the secretly recorded footage? Bank of Ireland's current code of conduct says there's an onus on employees to report even a suspicion of something wrong. We don't know if that was in place when the tapes were made. But we do know the bank said back then that they applied the highest standards of integrity to all their dealings. Hardly the case when Kelly Toner appeared to be deliberately falsifying records to push through a fraudulent claim for bad debt. Do you want to, do you want to take the there look? Oh, it's actually like a contract and then a reverse contract. It's just not drawing any attention to it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know that off. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. That particular claim was rejected when the full records emerged, including the parts Kelly Toner ordered cut off. But the company insuring Meteor's debts, Euler Hermes, with headquarters in London, paid out up to £100,000 in claims to the bank. We've been told that one false claim could jeopardise the entire payment. That is serious, and not only could that invalidate that part of the claim, but it might invalidate the whole policy for all the other claims. So by lying on one claim, she may have invalidated £100,000 worth of claims? She might have done. I'm not saying she would have done. It depends partly on the attitude that the insurance company takes and what a court, if it ever ended up in court, might determine in relation to the materiality of that action. But it's, it's that serious? Yes. Bank of Ireland never told Euler Hermes about the attempt to put through a false claim, nor showed them the tapes. However, Bank of Ireland said they did show the tapes to their own fraud insurers, the ones who we now know paid out 900,000 euro. But the bank would not tell us who those insurers were. Back in 2009, Kelly Toner was nervous about how the bank would react to her activities. Is that quite close? Is that spraying the phone like her? That's yes. Yeah, that. that. Right. Okay. Right. But she needn't have worried. When they were first alerted to the existence of the footage, bank managers called Kelly Toner in. We can now reveal that according to Kelly Toner, a senior bank official told her not to worry and that the bank would look after her. Kelly Toner continued to work for the bank for another two years. She is now operations director for a finance company. Despite her efforts to stop this program, she told Spotlight that if John Conway had not made his secret recordings, she would have been congratulated by the bank as she had been many times in the past. Sarah Breen, who was aware of Toner's actions but seemingly didn't report them, is still employed by the Bank of Ireland. Former journalist TD Shane Ross has been critical of the banking culture and in particular of the Bank of Ireland. He sits on the Public Accounts Committee in Dublin, where a major public inquiry into practices in Irish banks is underway. He says the broadcast of the tapes will undoubtedly raise questions in the Doyle. I think there'll be demands for action, and particularly from the government, because the government is a 14% shareholder in Bank of Ireland, and I don't see how they can tolerate this. These are two people who are acting on behalf of the Bank of Ireland, and behaving in a way which is kind of the wild west of, uh, of banking. It's just quite uncontrollable and utterly unacceptable. And it's quite obviously 
something which they never expect to be accountable for. Our legal expert questions the apparent lack of action by the bank and says the minute they became aware of the tapes, they should have acted. Being informed that, um, that this sort of thing was going on, uh, I would certainly expect the bank to conduct an internal investigation to find out exactly what had happened and whether there was an, ex an innocent explanation for it. We wrote to the bank repeatedly looking for just such an explanation. They said they could not discuss whether there was any internal disciplinary investigation because it would breach their duty of care and confidence to current and former employees. But Kelly Toner told us there was no disciplinary investigation or any follow-up inquiry from the bank's audit and compliance people. John Conway has spent many years in litigation with the Bank of Ireland and is still fighting the bank's attempts to enforce his personal guarantee on the basis that the debt collection was conducted fraudulently and recklessly. And 18 months after the bank alerted the police to allegations of discounting fraud at his company, John Conway says the PSNI still haven't contacted him. Why are you doing this now? What is the principle? Is this about winning a case? Is it about money? Is it about recouping your debt? What is your motivation? Why are you talking to us today? Uh, it's probably to get closure. Just get clo get rid of, you know what I mean? I have, I, have, um, I have tried for a number of years to get somebody in the bank to sit down and say, what we've done here is wrong. We're sorry. We're not going to do it again. This is, this, this is not what we do. And instead, they have basically just ignored me. Um, and... Um, you know, fuck them. Should not say that? Uh, you know, it's just, it just comes to a stage where you just say, look, you know, enough's enough. John Conway's sons have started a new electrical supply business, trading under the old name of Meteor. In the fraud report, the banks say they see this new business as a way of continuing the old firm, free from debt. Again, the bank are suggesting fraud. But as we know, the liquidator was unable to conclude that there had been fraudulent activity. And that may be the most significant puzzle of this whole story. How did the Bank of Ireland claim €900,000 in fraud insurance when John Conway has still not been visited by the police? John Conway's war with the Bank of Ireland continues. He fully expects they will bankrupt him in the near future. Thank <laughs> you.